firepower is normally meaningless and sometimes used by people who don't really understand. In fact, firepower consists of three separate and distinct components, volume of fire, combat range, and terminal effect. The history of small arms technology is the history of developments and advances in the three components. Since any weapon gains in one component at the expense of another, it also concerns the design trade-offs involved, how these trade-offs were incorporated into tactical doctrine, and how they affected the outcome of battle. Volume of fire is the number of rounds that a well-trained operator or crew can efficiently and accurately fire in one minute. This includes sustaining the fire for some period of time and putting the rounds on target. In a manually operated weapon, the soldier is the primary limiting factor in volume of fire. Automatic weapons are not so easy. All automatic weapons have a cyclic rate of fire which is an expression of the speed at which the mechanism functions. No automatic weapon, with one exception, can sustain a volume of fire the same as its cyclic rate, primarily because the heat of firing cannot be dissipated at the same rate that it builds up. This can seriously damage or destroy the weapon. There are ways of combating it, such as a quick change barrel, but each one brings its own set of advantages and disadvantages. As a good rule of thumb, most automatic weapons will have a sustained volume of fire somewhere between one-sixth and one-third of their cyclic rate. Combat range is expressed as a distance. Many interrelated factors have an effect on combat range. One is accuracy or shot-to-shot -shot uniformity, so all subsequent rounds go in the same place that the first round did. Barrel length and velocity have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with accuracy. Accuracy is a result of proper design and precision and uniformity in manufacture. In some cases, such as the flintlock smoothbore musket, accuracy will be the practical limit on combat range. Since the 1870s, trajectory has been the primary limiting factor. Further, trajectory gives rise to two divisions of combat range, battle site range and adjust site range. This black line represents the line of sight from shooter to target. This is the barrel and front sight of a firearm. If the barrel were held perfectly horizontal, the path of the bullet would define a curve much like this blue curve. However, rifles are made such that the barrel is always pointing upward in relation to the line of sight. The bullet starts out below the line of sight, travels upward and crosses the line of sight on the ascending branch of the trajectory. It passes through the maximum ordinate and then drops down on the descending branch, crossing back over the line of sight and falling away below it. In all cases, we want to aim between the breast pockets of the enemy and strike him no higher than the throat, nor lower than the belt buckle. That sight setting, or angle of the barrel pointing upwards, such that the maximum ordinate is never higher above the line of sight than the difference between the breast pockets and the throat, nor the descending branch no further below the line of sight than the distance from between the breast pockets to the belt buckle is the battle sight. And this point is the battle site range. 
Within this range, the shooter need not estimate the range to the target, nor adjust his sights. He simply aims between the breast pockets of his enemy, discharges the weapon without disturbing the alignment of the sights, and kills him. Battle, sight, range. For any target beyond this battle sight range, the shooter must adjust his sights. He estimates the range to the target and sets that range on his sights. By so doing, he is changing the angle of the barrel and the positioning of the trajectory curve in relation to the line of sight. If the shooter adjusts the sights for well beyond where his target actually is, the maximum ordinate may be so high above the line of sight that the bullet will go over the target at a closer range. Conversely, if the adjustment is well short of the actual range to the target, The bullet may pass below the target. This trajectory is much more of a curve than people think. A 4570, if fired with the barrel perfectly horizontal, will, in less than 500 yards downrange, drop more than 450 inches below the line of sight. A just sight range is that range such that the shooter can aim between the breast pockets of the enemy, make a 50 yard range estimation error or sight adjustment error, and still strike somewhere between the throat and belt buckle. Beyond the adjust sight range, the target can still be hit. However, range estimation must be more and more accurate. To review rapidly, battle sight range, the range within which all targets may be hit between throat and belt buckle without sight adjustment, and adjust sight range, that range within which aiming between the breast pockets will result in a hit between throat and belt buckle given no more than a plus minus 50 yard range estimation or sight adjustment error. The curve of the trajectory is very important. Anything which reduces the drop of the bullet and thereby flattens the trajectory will result in an increase in both battle sight range and adjust sight range. There are two primary ways of doing this. One is an increase in muzzle velocity, and the other is an improvement in aerodynamic efficiency. A bullet traveling downrange is constantly decelerated by air resistance. A round nose bullet will suffer great deceleration. By streamlining the nose of the bullet into the spitzer shape, the designer significantly increases the aerodynamic efficiency and reduces the loss of velocity. This aerodynamic efficiency is generally expressed as a decimal number called ballistic coefficient. The higher the ballistic coefficient, the more aerodynamically efficient the bullet. Other factors besides accuracy and trajectory affect combat range. The leader and the user of the weapon have the ability to change some of these. Training and acquisition of a sight picture, adjustment of sights, and range estimation will have a direct effect on combat range. If the shooter can hold a small error in range estimation and sight adjustment, or is trained to spot the fall of his rounds on the ground and use that as a basis for further estimation and adjustment, the adjust sight range 
will be increased. Before we leave combat range, one other point must be made. It is not uncommon to find sites graduated to 2,000 yards for weapons which have a four or 500 yard adjust site range. The numerical graduations on the rear site are no indicator whatsoever of either battle site or adjust site range. About the only exception to this is the British Army in the period 1905 to 1914. They were amongst the finest military marksmen and could use their weapons out to the limit of possible site adjustments. The most important of the three components of firepower is terminal effect. Terminal effect concerns the destruction of a target given a hit on that target. This will be covered in greater detail in another tape. I urge you to keep the components of firepower constantly in mind. They are necessary for tracing the development of small arms. Further, every weapon cartridge combination has a unique blend of the three components of firepower. This blend gives it certain advantages and disadvantages in relation to any other weapon. In no small measure, the tactical outcome of battle has been decided by the advantages and disadvantages of one nation's weapons against another, the leader's understanding of what those advantages and disadvantages were, and how to make them work for him. In future tapes, combat range and volume of fire will be shown on a standardized chart format such as this. The blue bar indicates the battle site range, while the orange bar is the extension for adjust site range. The volume of fire will be given as a number. In all cases, these are based upon a test analysis of the weapons involved, tempered with the best historical evidence available. Your impression of the weapon should be taken both from the range film and from the chart. The two must be used together in order to evaluate the weapon. The combat range volume of fire chart has been reduced to a tabular format. A copy will be issued you with the playing of this tape. Lastly, we are not putting on a uniform show. All uniforms will be the standard BDU and appropriate safety gear will be used. In most cases, the ammunition will be laid out beside the shooter. This is not a warping of history. Contemporary shooters were issued the proper accoutrements such that the ammunition would be readily available. A good example is the cartridge box of the American Revolution through war between the states era. These large leather boxes were slung across the shoulder on belts. When in battle, the shooter put the cartridge box in front and used his canteen strap and other equipment to hold the strap of the cartridge box firmly against his body. He also broke the flap of the cartridge box back, tucking it behind his waist belt so that it would remain stationary. If the shooter could find his belt buckle, he could find his ammunition. In sum, the three components of firepower are volume of fire, combat range with its two divisions, battle site range and adjust site range, and terminal effect. They are essential as threads of continuity in the study of the history of military technology and its relation to the outcome of battle. We hope you enjoy the tapes.